Pastor Shola Okodua. Praise the Lord. Please, if you love Pastor Kbojo, can we celebrate this man of God? And please, let's also celebrate Pastor Toy. Pastor Kbojo is such an exceptional leader. Praise the Lord. Wow, how has, has, been, has it been all this while? It's been powerful. And it's just going to go to a whole new level. Are you ready? We're talking on the team doing the impossible. And so if there is going to be an impossibility, it also suggests to us that there's going to be possibilities. The Bible says in the, in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 37, the angel of the Lord appeared and was speaking to Mary and said to her, said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. With God. At this time when the angel of the Lord was speaking to her, she was telling, he was telling her about the fact that her cousin would have a baby. And also he was speaking to her about her own baby at the same time. But that word God there, sometimes we only look at it from the perspective of God the Father. But we know that every time we see God, we are also talking about God the Father, God the Son, and the Spirit. So in other words, the, we, God is speaking there, also suggests to us that the God in the belly of Mary there will be nothing impossible for that God to do. This is why when Jesus came to the earth, he started to show them possibilities. One of the major assignments of Jesus to his disciples was to show them that it's truly possible with them. You see, it is always worthy to note also that if I don't want my child to do something, then I should not show my child. If I don't want her to do something. If I want to write an exam, the lecturer is first supposed to give me examples so that he can then set the question for me. And so when Jesus came, he began to show his people the power of modeling by showing to them that if I can do it, then you also can do it. And that's why in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23, we'll just look at that scripture very quickly, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 23. Jesus started to show his disciple the power of possibility. Matthew chapter 8 verse 23. If you can, please give me the TPT version. Matthew 8, 23. Thank you, Lord. Okay. They all got into a boat and began to cross over to the other side of the lake, and Jesus was exhausted and fell asleep. Next verse, verse 24. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly, a violent storm developed with waves so high that the boat was about to swamp. Now, the boat wasn't going to go down until Jesus was asleep. Yet, Jesus continued to sleep soundly. Next verse, verse 25. The disciples woke him up saying, save us, Lord, you are, we are all going to die. Now, watch this. If you are driving and you have a flat tire, you are entering inside a bus and you have a flat tire, who do you go and meet? You meet the driver of the bus, yes or yes? If you are inside a boat and a sailor is driving the ship, who do you go and meet? The sailor. But look at this. They did not go to meet the sailor. They did not go to meet the driver. They went to meet Jesus. Why? Because many times we know who has the answer. We know who has the answer. I remember one time I was traveling from Ife all the way down on campus then. I remember we had an accident. The car somersaulted. I remember very well there was a man at my back, a Muslim man with big turbans. As the, as the car began to somersault, he shouted, Jesus! I said, wait, oh, leave this Jesus for me. <laughs> Leave this Jesus alone for me. Glory be to God. But this is the problem here. We know who to go and meet, but we don't take the posture of who that person is taking. So are we willing to take the posture like he is taking? And so Jesus said to them, after he had come the storm, he said, why don't you have faith? Why don't you have faith? In other words, he was saying to them, you don't believe in your heart and you're saying it with your mouth. This was the first example of the things that Jesus showed to them. Now, in Matthew chapter 14, just some, verse, some chapters afterwards, here comes Jesus also, and another test he was giving to them, another test. So he was walking on water at this time, and there comes um, Peter. 
Peter looked at Jesus and said, if you're the Christ, beat me to come. And Jesus said, come. And then he walked on water. But look at this. Their fear at the first part was the wave. They were thinking they were going to drown by the wave. The second test was similar to the very first one. But this was the catch right here. Jesus was showing them possibility that the first time I stopped that wave, you can do the same thing also. But look at what they did. Peter decided to walk on water. He started to walk on water and exact the same thing. This is what pastor was saying yesterday, that many times the failure of the past can stop your faith. So he looked again. He was doing just fine until he looked at the storm, looked at the waves. And the moment he started to look at the waves, what happened? He began to sink again. What should he have done? The first thing first is apply the same principle of the examples that Jesus gave to him. Jesus saw the storm and said, peace be still and I stopped it. Now you are on water. What should you do first? Calm the waves down first and begin to walk on water. Jesus was showing us that it is possible. But this is very important also. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter, let's look at it at the message translation. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Mark 9 23. Glory to God. Mark 9, 23. Please give me the message translation. Mark 9, 23. Woo, something is building in this place. Glory to God. Mark 9, 23. Mark 9. Look at this. I want us to read this scripture together with a loud voice. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Jesus said, if... There are no ifs. Anything can happen. Look at that. It says if. Control, delete if. Amongst believers, impossible. Anything can happen with a believer. Anything. Somebody tap five people around you, tell them anything, 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 anything. Glory to God. Now quickly, there are components to faith. And one of the components to our faith is joy. Oh, yes. The Bible says in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 33, verse 17, it says, Jehovah your God is mighty in your midst. He will save, he will rejoice over you with joy. He is silent in his love. You remember how when you, you, you know, a, 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 a woman who is having a wedding, the way the dad danced with her. And as he's dancing with her, he's speaking to her. That's how God dances with us, with joy. And there are three ways to get joy. I'm just going to say one. Number one is the joy that comes from his presence. Acts chapter 2 and verse 28. Acts 2 verse 28. Many times we focus on the fact that you have, you know, the fruit of the spirit, joy is on your inside. And that's great and that's correct. But there's a joy that comes from the presence. There is a joy that comes from intimacy that you cannot explain or understand whatsoever way. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 verse 28, it says it this way. It says, you have made me known you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. This is what the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I don't know if this has happened to you before. Every time you go to the place of God in prayer, even when you are having a down time and a bad time, there is one joy that wells up in your spirit. You can't explain it. You can't understand it. It's just deep on your inside. All of a sudden, you started praying, Lord, change the story. Lord, change the situation. And then you come out of that place with rejoicing, with shout, with thanksgiving. Why? Because the joy of his presence has invaded you. It's that joy that produces faith, strength. It's that joy that produces strength. That's why when God speaks a word to you, you, are, you receive a strength to want to do it instantly. Has that happened to you? There's a joy that comes with that. The joy of his presence. John chapter 15 and verse 11, put it this way. You have told, I have told you this, so that your joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Glory to God. And now in Luke chapter 10, the Bible says, and Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. That word there speaks of agalio. To means, it means to spin, to jump, and to rejoice. Now listen very carefully what I want to share today in the few minutes that I have left. Every time we talk about joy, we only see it from the perspective of singing to God and praising God. And while that is correct, some three years ago, something powerful happened to me that changed my life. My wife was in the hospital. She, had a, she was about to have a baby. And my wife had already told me that the name of our daughter was going to be called Iremide. I said, which name is that one? 
I wanted Fiona, Sophia, you know. <laughs> so we were there, and it was about time for the baby to come out, and the baby wasn't coming out. Complications. And then I sat down there, I was thinking to myself, what are we going to do here? I was praying in the spirit. Then I saw this woman. She was the, 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 the matron, you know, at, at the, there. And so she stood there and was looking at both of us. The doctors were running out of skelter. Then for the first time in my life, I saw this very powerful. She went to the wall, faced the wall, and started to sing to God. And she was dancing. She was dancing. And she was singing, Ire mi de, ire ayo, ire mi kabo, ire mi what, which is my joy has come, my goodness has come. She was dancing. The moment she started dancing, she, in less than five minutes, I was looking at her. She knew exactly what to do. She went to the doctor, told the doctor, this is exactly what we are going to do to save this situation. Pam! That exact thing did. Pam! The situation was solved. This is what I'm talking about. There is an aspect of joy we have neglected, which is dancing in the spirit. That you cannot explain it. You cannot understand it. But there's something on your inside. Look, dancing is a language of the spirit. I'm telling you the truth. Look, John the Baptist, as powerful as John the Baptist was, do you know how he was killed? By Herodias and Herod. Dance. She was dancing before the king, the king's sword and oath. Anything you want, I will give to you. He said, now I want the head of John the Baptist. I will give it to you. Look at what happened to David as well. David was dancing. And as David was dancing, the wife looked at him and said, why would a king dance like this, undignified? Look, there are times you don't know what to say. There is no vocabulary. You know, listen, this is very powerful. There is what we call verbal and non-verbal communication. While we can speak with word of faith with our mouth, dancing is a non-verbal communication as well, which also speaks to faith. Which means you are rejoicing hope against hope. You are believing in hope. That surely there is an end and your expectation, my God, will not be cut short. Dancing in the spirit. In the next three minutes, I want you to rise on your feet. We are going to release a sound of joy. We dance. Listen, I believe very strongly, listen, that in the body of Christ, I believe one of the reasons why the move of God is so strong in Nigeria is because of the level of the high praise and dance. And I truly believe that this year, there would be an eroding of new sounds from musicians, choir members, Afro gospel, new sounds of high praise. Songs you would hear and all of a sudden you are pushed to dance. The oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness there sometimes speaks of guilt. Sometimes speaks of shame. Sometimes speaks of suicidal thoughts, depression. But I see people dancing in this moment in the next two minutes and things are falling off. They are acting palamakopa idabahas. Listen, at the count of three, you will do it, we call it dance anyhow. Undignified. Marapila. Are you ready? Please, you are going to give us some sound. At the count of three, I see activations, angels. I see things moving, healings, signs and wonders, the prophetic gifts of the spirit in manifestation. Are you ready? One. Please, don't let it make sense. Two. Hey. Three. Sound your praise, our heart we cry, this voice will sing. No, you are not dancing, you are not dancing. The joy of the Lord. I told you that God is moving mighty in our midst right now. Hey, 
Toporototo. Healings. Cancer just disappeared. Arthritis just disappeared. New visions. New visions. New visions. New visions. New visions. New visions. New visions.